people talk about South Central, it's usually the new South Central. Tell me about South Central when you were there. Well, uh, I was uh, a witness to the 65 riots and, and the whole thing. So um, it was it was the South Central of uh, evolution. You know, we, it was transitioning during that time uh, in a big way. And um, but um, my family, even though we were within that type of uh, setting, we weren't of it. You know, we just tried to maximize. Uh, what we could, you know, we were church going, and um, my parents were were great parents. They did the right thing with regards to, you know, putting in the time to to my brother and I. And um, you know, I kept busy with the, the music, and my brother kept busy, at, partly with music and chemistry and other things. So we were we were busy uh, siblings, you know. So we didn't have time to to come to some of the things that uh, South Central was offering at the time. Um, but I think the overtone of it all was uh, I think that experience helped me to be the stronger person uh, that I am today uh, because, you know, it, it was a challenging thing. You know, you, you, you had to go through different chapters of, uh, of growing up, you know, and, and dealing with, you know, really specialized situations that, you know, a lot of people didn't have to go through. So I think it made me a stronger person overall. So I, I don't regret to meet those experiences. Um, I, I grew up in Los Angeles as well, South Central, 107th in Maine. Mm-hmm. Went to Lock Gompers, same thing, played in the band. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I consider myself a disciple of Frank Harris. Uh, I think when you Me were too. there, you were, oh, you, you, you familiar with Frank. Uh, oh, good. And Mr. Duffy as well. And, yeah, Andrews. Uh, were, were you, was Reggie still there? Mr. Andrews? Reggie was still there, too. Oh, yep. okay, 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 there. okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what part did you think that uh, Locke played in you becoming an exceptional musician, selling millions of records? I think it was the, the real um, jump start for me, honestly. I mean, you, you take a Frank Harris and a Don Dustin, who uh, I'm sure you've experienced, are so dedicated. I mean, not even during, not only during the school hours, but even after the school hours, the marching band and the concert band and the jazz <laughs> Exactly. Band. Uh, you know, we would we would march on the on the field until nine o'clock at night. Exactly. Yeah, I had to come home and do homework. You know. <laughs> so, so, so um, I think I think you know, in terms of commitment, in terms of uh, setting the students in the right direction, um, I've really profited by that. And then uh, at that particular point, we were fortunate enough to have some decent money in the music yeah. department, unlike you know schools today where they're taking a lot from the arts. Exactly. Uh, on different levels. And um, so we were very, very fortunate, man. And, and, and it was the pride of the school, you know. Uh, the marching band uh, was nationally known. We were the number one band in the country in terms of high Exactly, band. exactly. And um, so, it, I mean, even the gangs uh, were, were, were aware of that. And the gangs would say, hey, look, don't mess with the music. Don't mess with the bands. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and so that was. That was a comfort zone. We, we witnessed a little more safety, even though we were around all the stuff that was going on at the time. So I, I was glad to be a, a part of that that experience. And some wonderful musicians uh, and, and vocalists, as you know, came out of the lot. Man, exactly. Uh, yeah. Patrice so, Russian, uh, uh, Ndugu. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ndugu, Daniel LaMail, Ricky Myers. Yeah, Ricky Minor. Uh, Ricky Minor, Rodney yeah. Taylor, Dexter. Man, yeah. it's 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 yeah. it's kind of deep. You know, when when you think about it, I, I, I mean, one day I, I was I was thinking, I was like, man, all these guys came out of Lock, and they Lock has some some powerful people coming out of there. That's that's really in, in some serious positions. Okay. Well, you know, mediocrity wasn't uh, a word that that was used during those times uh, with, with uh, Frank and Don. Man, I mean. Mm-hmm. We, and, and we held them up so high that we wanted to do great for them. They exactly. Like the coach of our football team, you know. <laughs> exactly. Like you know what I'm saying? So, exactly. Um, so, and, and ironically, uh, only eight or nine months ago, uh, uh, Don Dustin and what well, we called him Miss Henniger back in the day, she was head of the drill team. Uh-huh. They're, they've been married. They've been married forever. They they were at our house, man. Oh, okay. Uh, Seven or eight uh, months ago, you know, uh, 
breaking bread and just talking about old times. Man. Because um, I live in Denver. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, they uh, made a trip out and, you know, to see uh, several people, and we were on that list, and I was so happy. It was oh, man. to see my high school teacher across the table from me, man, breaking bread with that dog. Man. You know, so yeah, that's, that's amazing. Very cool. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah. you leave Lock and you go to University of Redlands. How did you wind up there? Well, my brother, um, who is my older brother, um, <clears throat> he went to Lock, excuse me, to Redlands for four years. Oh, okay. And I got a chance to go visit with him on campus periodically. And, oh. And um, so I was familiar with the campus. Um, he was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, and I wanted to play at Alpha and it just seemed to be a natural transition since I had been on campus. And um, it was a smaller school. I think at the time I was going, the student body was about 2,500. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, it was the first year was a culture shock to me coming from Watts. I can imagine. And, and my first roommate being white. And, and so it was just, it was interesting. And, you know, it took <laughs> me a minute to get my, my acclimation, you know. And, exactly. Um, but it was it was a good four year experience. I'm glad I did it. Um, That's good. I'm still using some of the the things that I learned back then, and you know, applying it to what I do now. But <clears throat> I can honestly say that most of most of what I've um, talked about was like on the job training and just being out there in the midst of the music music and oh, okay. learning as I go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What is jazz today? You know, KKGO is no more. Radio stations have moved from smooth jazz to old school jazz to R&B music, and now it's old school with smooth jazz fillers. So what, what is it today? You know what? Honestly, I think, I think even the, the higher up at the stations are trying to figure out what jazz is today. I mean, they're changing their format. You take 94.7 the wave. I exactly. mean, within the past three or four years, they've changed their format about three or four times. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, they're based it obviously on numbers and popularity and, and all that. Um, but I think when the the higher conglomerates came in, like a clear channel, and they bought up all the stations several years ago uh, and took the um, air personality who we all look forward to listening to. Like mm-hmm. back in the day, for me, it was a guy named Montague. Oh, Chuck Niles. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and... Um, you know, I, I, I not only look forward to the music, but I look forward to how he applies music on the exactly. stage. And it was it was a real, it was a it was an event, you mm-hmm. know. And now everything is computer, computer, computer controlled. They're taking the air personalities off the airways yeah. for the most part, or if the air personalities are on there, then it's syndicated, you know. So yeah. Pre-record everything, and uh, so I think they took the essence out of it, and slowly but surely. It sucked the life out of this genre of music that we spent our whole life trying to perfect. And, you yep. know, what, what is jazz now? Jazz is basically a, a genre of live performances. We don't have the stations. We don't have the um, the major department store outlets. We can sell our, our units like we used to, like the Best Buys and, and all that. I mean, to, to some degree, they have a little small jazz uh, yeah. section within, you know, the pop and R&B and rap and all that, but, uh, but nothing like the old days yeah. when we were considered quiet storm and we were doing videos like the R&B guys and, and you know, the, the, the marketing promotion was just like the R&B guys. You know, we go to all the radio stations, do all the TV stations. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, uh, it, it, it's, it's a You go there and you don't know anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think the other thing, too, um, and it's not to knock on the youth of our world, but I think record companies now are hiring uh, a lot of young guys and gals who really don't know the history of the music. Man. You know, they, they know it as far as maybe 10, 20 years ago, you know, hip-hop and all that, but they don't go back where all this stuff started. And I think the music as a whole <laughs> is being hindered, you we're, know. We're trying to book Al Jarreau for television. And the... Um, the person that was supposed to be doing the booking actually wanted us to send a CD of Al Jarreau's so that they can listen to him to to see what he sounds like to determine whether or not they want to book him. 
And I, and I was like, man, are you, are you kidding me? I said, how, how old are you? You, you don't know who Al Jarreau is? Man, it, it was crazy. Exactly. It's scary, man. It really is scary. And, you know, Al has put his heart and soul into every word he's sung over these years, man. He's still doing it and sounding great at it and um, still up, up old the, you know, the actual essence of the music, man, and, and the integrity. And, and for somebody like that, a key person who is the deciding factor whether Al gets the gig or not, he doesn't even know who Al man, is. Man, I was, I was amazed at how do you not know who Al Jarreau is and, and how, how, how did you get in that position? How do you get new fans when those ticket prices are sky high? Yeah, that's another thing. Um, and, you know, actually, these days, it's really up to the harder mm-hmm. to, uh, I mean, all of us obviously have to make a living. Exactly. Uh, we got to pay our bills just like everybody else. But uh, people like myself, and Kirk Whalen and, and others, we've, we've had endless conversations about this kind of thing. And that's why we we try to go in schools between our schedules and and sometimes do free concerts just to enlighten the youth about what we're doing. Um, slowly but surely, it's, it's a reassuring thing for me. Um, in my concerts, I'm having uh, a lot more youth showing up. You know, most of us, like... Uh, passionate saxophone players who want to learn more. They're just like little sponges. They just want to absorb. And um, so at my concerts, I always do like a CD signing. They come to the table. Oh, okay. You know, and they, they have these, these, you know, pertinent questions about, you know, how I practice, what kind of form, what kind of mouthpiece I use. You know, In, endless stuff. scales. And, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and, um, and I think that's reassuring, you know, that they're opening their mouths and really wanted to find out about it. Uh, but I think, you know, artists should go into the schools a bit more. Yeah. I remember when, when we used to do official college tours back in the day. Yeah. Where we would go to a, a Clark College or a Morehouse College mm-hmm. or, you know, just, and, and they would have like a, a jazz theory that they would do during the, during the school curriculum. And we would come in and maybe during the daytime we'll have a master class with the students. And then that night we'd do official concert, you know, and, and I would do like maybe a two-week run of just colleges. Mm. I haven't done that in years, but I think that's what's missing, that yeah. we're not balancing, you know, doing the major theaters and, and, and the big jazz festivals with the actual galactic side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, that, I think honestly, that's where you win your pants, you know, yeah. you can inspire them right outside of the classroom. You know? Exactly. Okay, I believe the ultimate sound comes from the pairing of a sax and a trumpet like Miles and Coltrane. Who would you consider to be your Miles? Well, in terms of trumpet, I mean, I, w- I would go with a guy like Nicholas Payton. Nicholas uh, Payton. Yeah, Nicholas is a bad boy. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's well-rounded. I like the spirit of his sound. Uh, he has, like, such an authority mm-hmm. to his playing. Um, again, I would love to, to couple with him. Or or a Wynton Marcellus. I mean, I would love to. You don't, you don't like that trombone shorty? Oh, I love trombone it's trombone shorty. shorty. Trombone shorty. <laughs> but, man, we, we, act, we actually uh, <laughs> did a jazz festival together in Florida a couple of Florida. years ago. Florida, yeah. Yeah, and, and this is the first time that I had seen him live. Uh-huh. I was just totally impressed, man. Trombone that boy, shorty. he's bad. He's, he's phenomenal. And he's, he's approaching the music a different way, you know. Yeah. He's kind of fusing the New Orleans thing with... Well, that's that with, bounce. Uh, yeah. That's exactly. that New Orleans bounce. And, yeah. And it, uh, it works. It's mm-hmm. a great formula, man. And, exactly. Uh, and he does it well. And he's got a great young man behind him. Uh, all who are a great musicians in their own right. So, yeah. In fact, Trombone and I, uh, uh, we actually talked about doing some things together. Oh, you okay. Know, there's definitely a mutual respect thing uh, going on there. So maybe... Maybe something will come to fruition on that. Winter concert mm-hmm. this Friday, Terrace Theater, Long Beach. The gospel yeah. according to jazz. And in keeping with Kurt Whalen's theme, you seem to be one of the disciples. Tell me how that happened. Well, Kirk and I have been uh, friends for almost four decades now. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's just it's, uh, it's the ultimate mutual respect for one another. And, 
you know, our, our family love one another. I mean, there's just this wonderful friendship. And stemming from that, uh, we've got the chance to um, do a lot of music together, both in the studio, on record, and then live, you know. And, and we, we started out trading off on the Whitney Houston tour back in the early 90s. Uh-huh. And then from there, uh, you know, we started out, you know, recording careers and, and started doing festivals together. And then uh, we did a, a tour called Groove and Grover, you know, a trip to Grover Washington Jr. And, and, you know, we just periodically we play together. So for the past two Christmas seasons, we uh, did the Gospel of Forty Jazz Christmas tour. Oh, okay. And um, so this is the, the third one that I've been involved in. And as always, very excited about uh, partnering with him on stage. And we, we just have kind of a, a synergy that happens between us when we play together that's really fresh and, and exciting. So I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, you know, and it, 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 it's music in a very authentic type of uh, presentation. You know, yeah. really, you know, during the course of that 90 minutes or however long we're on stage, will come so many different directions in the music that uh, it just keeps it fresh and, and keeps challenged all the time. So that's, I'm that's really the question. Today my life is? Today my life is balanced. Balanced. Um, I have always tried to strive for balance and, um, you know, growing up in the music and being a family man and, and all that, um, you know, I was constantly juggling because I'm on the road, but I, I need to spend time with kids. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the road, but I need to spend quality time with the wife. You know, so now that the kids are grown, they're doing their thing. You know, the wife and I can do whatever we need to do to, to you know, make sure that we're, we're in check. And she travels with me a lot more now that the kids are grown. And, and uh, so there's a balance now that uh, uh, I just I'm more content with now. You know, I, and it, it just it flows better. My my fifties feel real good right now. Sounds good. You know, Sounds and, good. Uh, and I'm in a real happy place. A huge shout out to uh, to you and the magazine. Thanks for all your support. And uh, you know, you, you're a very important part of what we are trying to keep. You know, out. You know, in the faces, man. And, and thank you for your efforts. Uh, for helping us to do that, you know. Hey, thank you.